Today we do not know what is happening with the Herridge situation and the lighting. Not so pale. But hello! Today we have a new type of video on this channel. I will answer some of your questions that you leave in the comments. Sometimes the questions demand a more elaborate response, so instead of typing all of that in the comment, I thought it would be a good idea to answer them in a video, and also I think some of these questions or some of these answers might be useful for other people as well. They might not. Who knows? I don't. You may say this is similar to funny you would ask that Betsy does on her channel, but it is not. I do not have Frank the Fox, and I don't look good in a dress. So, that said, I think this is lower production, which is fine, we are, we are okay with that. I have about 25 questions to go through here, I will not answer all 25. I think today we will try with 5 or 10 or 15. I have no idea how long it will take for me to answer to one question. I guess it depends how long Miro will ramble. Question number one. How do we know which Hoya is terrestrial? Is there any website we can look up? The best websites that I can recommend is Ipni and Plants of the World Online. I will link both of those websites in the description below. Whenever I am interested to find out something about a Hoya, I will go to these websites and then you may even find the original publication. Typically, in the original publication, you will see a description of a plant and it will tell you whether the plant is epiphytic hemiapophytic or terrestrial. From my experience, if you grow your plants in organic mixes, then it is relevant for you to know whether a plant is terrestrial or epiphytic. So if you do have a terrestrial Hoya, you would want to make a mix that is less airy because that is not something that their roots are accustomed to. However, it doesn't seem to matter as much from my experience, when you grow in inorganic mixes, terrestrial and epiphytic hoists seem to do well in semi-hydro without any particular adjustments. I think it would only matter for you if you do grow in organic mixes. Question number two. Is there a difference between Kentiana and Wayeti? If I had a production team, someone would get fired for putting this question on. but actually don't, and clearly. The difference between Kentiana and Wayeti. Honestly, I have never looked that deeply into the topic or the debate between Kentiana and Wayeti. There is a difference between Kentiana and Wayeti, and it seems to me that there is some difference in the leaf, but the most obvious difference is supposed to be in the flower. Now, all the Hoyas that I have are supposedly Wayeti. None of them are Kentiana. Even the one that has been sold to me as Hoya Kentiana variegated is supposed to be Hoya Wayeti. People who have both of these Hoyas say that all the variegated Hoyas that have bloomed so far that are supposedly Kentiana, that they are in fact Wayeti. So Hoya Lori Lin is not Hoya Kentiana Lori Lin, it is Hoya Wayeti Lori Lin, and that is the outer variegated one. The inner variegated one is also Hoya Wayeti, and then it is inner variegated. That one doesn't have a specific name attached to it, at least not to my knowledge. It seems that Hoya Kentiana is much more difficult to come by than Hoya Wayeti. So that is kind of the answer. It's not a very good answer. Answer, I do know that. Typically, I don't research plants that I don't have, so I don't have Hoa Kentiana and I never really looked up the difference. I will look up the difference in the future and I will attempt to get non-variegated plant under the name Hoa Kentiana. That being said, a much higher priority on my list is Hoya Wayeti Lori Lin. So, we will see which one we will get first. I don't know who we is. It's just me. And that is a sign that you should move on to the next question, Miro. Question number three. Where do you get your trellises? I most of the time make them myself. There is a great video that Doug Chamberlain made and on his channel Vermont Hoyas, and this is a method that also collectors in Sweden use. I think it was Toral Nyhaus that started this. It may not have been. Don't quote me on that or anything, really. This is Rabbit Fence Trellis. Basically, what you do is you go out and you buy a roll of Rabbit Fence. And sometimes you can buy different lengths. 
Here you can buy entire roll, which is around 60 euros, and it will probably make you hundreds of trellises. I go out and buy four meters of rabbit fence, and that makes me about 30 trellises, I would say. Now the way that you make these is you cut out the height that you want, for me, 60 centimeters works best because this is the size that fits on my shelves. And then when it comes to the length, I will count four of these fields, of these rectangular fields. I'm not sure if we can see that. So that's one. I'm gonna break something, probably my finger. So that's one field, I count four. And then you, you can use a rolling pin or you can roll them with your own hands. But I would say you can use any piece of metal really that has this net type of a structure. I have seen people use different things. I like rabbit fence because it has a coating of plastic on top. So when it goes in semi-hydro, it doesn't rust as much. There is still some rust going on, which is not something that I am a fan of. I would really like for that not to happen, but it is what it is. So this is the one type of trellis that I use, and these are the ones that I have the most because they are the cheapest. The second type of trellis that I use is this ladder type. This is something that I buy already assembled, finished. I clearly did not make this myself. These are about a little bit over one euro. So compared to the rabbit fence, I think it's quite expensive. I think to make 30 rabbit fence trellises, I pay 10 euros or something like that. And then this one is one. So I could either purchase 10 of these or make 30 of rabbit fence trellises. Guess what I go for. And honestly, I don't find these pretty either. I mean, I don't find the rabbit fence trellis pretty. It's just that it's useful for some of the Hoyas. The prettiest trellises that I have seen are the ones that I saw on Plantanica website. She is from Sweden and I think they are made there. Of course, there are similar trellises that you can buy, but this is what I have available. This is what is easy to find here. But I think once you have 100, 2 or 300 Hoyas, it becomes quite expensive when you add up the cost of the trellises, of the potting mixes, of the pots and so on. So I think very quickly collectors go for the cheaper options because, you know, cuttings of more uncommon plants become expensive and then to spend additional money on all the pots and trellises. It adds up, this ain't a cheap hobby. I should have collected stamps. The other issue with these trellises is that they don't fit on my shelf. Is that a mealy bug? No, it's not. Okay. Where was I? They don't fit on my shelf yet. Yeah. They can only fit on the top part of my shelf and because there is no level above that. But here it just, yeah, it doesn't fit at all. Not even the trellis itself, let alone the trellis with the pot. I could shorten it, but then I'm like, I paid one euro for this and I'm gonna cut it, which is what I do for the rabbit fence. I'm cutting it, so you know. Yeah, I try not to cut into these, their virgin trellises still. That was weird. Anyways, those are the two type of trellises that I use. I used to use the plastic ones, the plastic ladder, but they were not as useful to me because they're quite short. See, it's difficult to find the right size. Also, I want to say that not all Hoyas look good on a rabbit fence trellis. My Hoya Jennifer looked terrible, Hoya Carrie looks awful. So for some of the Hoyas, you may want to use either a ladder or a hoop. You will have to find that out through trial and error. I can tell you that my Hoya Obovata looks much better on a ladder. My Hoya Kerry looks much better on a ladder. My Hoya Jennifer. Number four, where do you source all your pots and where do you find this awesome plastic ladders? I buy all of my pots here in Serbia. There is a, they're made by a Serbian manufacturer. There are similar pots that you can find in Ikea. I saw them, the ones with the ridges, and I think these do look quite good. Now the issue with these pots that I have is they have a ledge inside. They are made for self-watering, kinda. And I do find that useful sometimes, but sometimes I don't find it as useful because not all pots will fit. 
Sometimes I have to look very hard to find the pots that will be flush with these. These ones clearly don't work. I have managed to find some that work. For example, on my Hoya Blasharnese. But you can see how shallow this pot is. This is more of a African violet pot. And the orchid pots, like for this Hoya Obovata, are much taller. This is the same size of the cover pot, but clearly this is flush and this ain't. I don't know if everyone else is struggling in all the other countries, but I am struggling a lot to find good cover pots where my pot, my inner pot, will not be visible. But like, please let me know, is it just, it, it cannot be just a me issue. Are you struggling to find the appropriate pots? like? cover pots and regular pots like why is it so hard to match them who are these cover pot manufacturers communicating with like what the <sighs> there is just one type of pot that i was able to fit into this so who are you making these for who plastic ladders i don't use anymore i don't think they're that pretty i saw that a lot of people think they're pretty which honestly i'm surprised by that but I also find them in the shop that sells plastic items here, locally. I think you can find them on Amazon. I don't think plastic ladders would be difficult to find. I think someone needs to make inner pots and cover pots and trellises. And all of those should be available in one place. And all of those things should be cheap. And all of those should be shipped worldwide. And they should be a perfect fit for one another. Now, the next question really indeed makes me worried for you, for your eyesight. And I think a lot of you need to go and see an ophthalmologist because you asked me, how do you trellis your Hoyas? I made no secret of this. I am terrible at trellising Hoyas. So I'm not sure why you are asking me. And I can show you some very bad examples. My Hoya Elagiorum that is about to bloom. Like, what is this loop here? That should be up. It's, it's an absolute mess in trellising. It doesn't look as bad on the camera, but trust me, when you see it in person, you're like, what happened there? What was the concept? I don't know what the concept was. It just happened. My Hoya Caudata, again, doesn't look bad on camera, but here we, the idea was to go around like this, as if this is the loop. I don't know why it is I should have gone around in a spiral, but for some reason that didn't work, so I went like this in a loop. I think this is a combination of all the techniques. I treated this both as a tower and as a loop or hoop or whatever you want to call it. So part of the plant spirals and then part of the plant just goes like this. It's a combination of technique. It's a mixed technique. I'm definitely not the person to ask, and for some of the Hoyas I simply gave up. I started to hang my Hoyas in my window, you can't see them now, but all of the Hoyas that I found way too challenging to trellis, I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna hang you. I do admit, there are times when I make it work and it looks normal. Please tell me I'm not the only one that finds it challenging to trellis your Hoyas, I cannot be the only one. Next question. Could you please recommend the best method or tool you use to detect nearly impossible to see spider mites? Prayer. You need to pray very hard to Hoya gods. Aside from that, what you can use is a cotton swab. You can use a sprayer or you can moisten, wet the cotton swab in, in your sink, whatever. Don't make it too wet or if you do, you can just squeeze the water out of it. It just needs to be slightly damp. Now you will take that cotton swab and you can wipe the underside and the top of the... I don't know why I'm doing this with my... I have like literally 10 Hoyas on my desk. I don't know why I'm doing it with my hand. So what you will do, you will take the cotton swab and you will wipe the top and the bottom side of the leaf. I would check from the top to bottom because that's how spider mites most of the time work. They will attack the new growth first and then the bottom. If you see red or orangey dots on your on your cotton swab and they are not coco coir, then you have spider mites, most likely. And those are the ones that people call the red spider mites or the false spider mites. Those are the ones that are most difficult to, to get rid of on Hoyas. You can kind of see here the whitish thing that is not splash. 
You can definitely see on some of the leaves there is this residue. That is spider mite treatment. I use sulfur-based fungicide because it seems that sulfur works really well to kill spider mites. There has been a research done on this, but I didn't look into the research. I just got this tip from people in Sweden. Maybe in the future I will dive into this. Hopefully not, uh, but... Yeah, sulfur seems to work really well. It does leave the deposit on the leaves, and sometimes you mistake it for mealybugs. Like you can see on the bottom, that is all the deposit from sulfur. It will wash off eventually, uh, especially if you shower your Hoyas, which I clearly don't. Um, this hasn't seen a shower in a couple of weeks. But if you do, it will shower, it will wash away from your leaves. But it will also kill spider mites, which is the most important thing. Another method that I have heard people using is to go into a dark room, or maybe stay in the room where you are, turn off the lights, wait for a couple of minutes, and then you can quickly turn on your flash on the phone, for example, and you should be able to see them come out. They are very difficult to spot with your eyes. I don't think, I think in most cases you cannot see them, but in some cases you can, if you look for a very long time. And it just looks like a piece of dust or smaller than a piece of dust. You know those lint thingies that you see? And it really takes a long time for you to look. And most of the time you're not even sure if it's a red spider mite or you're just imagining. I think I'm mostly imagining, but Another sign is that the tip of your vines will start to die back for no reason. Tips of the vine can die back if it's too dry or if you have not watered your Hoya or if you re-trellised your Hoya recently, sometimes even if you keep the tip of the vine going up, sometimes it will die back. It's just the way it is. But sometimes it is also spider mites because they attack the new growth because it's the softest. It's the easiest one, I think, for them to attack. So if you see any of those signs, I would definitely check for spider mites. If you spot them early on, I would say it is not as difficult to get rid of them, but if you ignore the signs, the warning signs, they can be quite difficult to get rid of. And I would like to point out higher humidity does not help. Of course, there is also no reason to panic. I think with consistent treatment, you will be able to get rid of them. I personally use sulfur fungicide, and I think one or two treatments is enough for me. And of course, they will reappear again after three, four months, but it is what it is. I think when you start to grow plants, you should also understand that you will for sure have pests. There is no escaping them. And once you start getting pests, you will get them again. So if you eradicate all the mealybugs, you will get them again in the next six months or a year. It's just very difficult to not have any pests at all and to have hundreds of plants. It's, it's impossible. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed some of these answers and I hope you enjoy this format. I do have 15 more questions, so... I will try to get that video out as soon as possible, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can leave them in this video if you have any additional questions, and I will try to answer them in the future. If the answer is really short and simple, I will try to do it via comment, but if it's something more elaborate, then I will do it in the video form. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did like the video, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're already not, and have a wonderful day. I will see you very soon. I have to move all these Hoyas from my desk because I'm pretty sure I'm very close to knocking some of these plans over. So let's just get ahead of that. Okay, see you soon. Bye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie Danube Daniels, Estelle, Houseplant, Heather, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B. Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, PJ, Rachel Collette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Spinach Geek, Stephanie H2O, Tanya, TJWO, Vicky Tinkler, and Zlokovny Pony. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons. Angelina Far 
Farnan, April Arroyo, Brian Phillips, Catherine G, Jacinta, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlov. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline Dinsla and Tang Watanasriya Kul. Thank you all so much for your incredible support. I hope that you are enjoying the videos and I will see you soon.